Jobs are changing and everyone wants to be an influencer. More than 30% of kids aged 8 to 12 list YouTuber as their number one career and the number one job they want to do. I recently spoken to a fifth grade teacher who had told me that 90% of her kids wanted to be an influencer or a YouTuber as a career. 90% of a classroom wants to be a YouTuber. Interesting, right? Jobs are ever changing and everyone needs to be on the internet. Everyone needs to be into this attention economy. And hey, it seems so lucrative. It seems so amazing and obvious, right? This is where the attention is at. The economy is now an attention economy. Wherever the attention is directed, that's where the money is flowing. And so many different apps and platforms are realizing this and this is how they're making a lot of money. So why wouldn't someone who sees this wanna become an influencer, wanna have a message, wanna talk about something, create cool, fun YouTube videos? But how do you do this? Why is this now the main thing that people want to do? When I was younger, I remember watching a bunch of YouTubers like Ryan Higo was making amazing videos, Smosh, Ray William Johnson. I even remember a guy named Swoozy making videos. And to this day, I still watch a lot of his videos. And I would watch how he talked to people, interact with people. I'm like, yo, these videos are so dope. They're awesome. He's telling really funny stories, he's entertaining. And I'm like, yo, I want to be a YouTuber. And this is, again, someone who at the time, again, being born in 1998, you're thinking, hmm, like, I wonder why I want this to be my career. Because it seems so fun. It seems so easy, right? You're just talking to people. But there's a method to it. There's so much that goes into it behind the scenes. And now more than ever, it's even more saturated and everyone can create content. Everyone can do it. We all have these phones. So how do you do it? When you ask kids about it and what they want to be when they grow up, people scoff and look at them like, Psh, why do they want to do that? And again, it's because kids are starting to see that's where their attention is, so that's what they want to do. When we were younger, the attention was what? Be a doctor, be a lawyer, be an engineer, make this money this way, the career option, right? But now it's even harder to enter a career because I know so many people with degrees who can't even find jobs because they need 10 years of experience. They have finance degrees, they have biology degrees, they have degrees in environmental science, but yet they can't find these jobs because they're, it's so crowded at the top now. There's so, everyone has a degree now, everyone has it. So how do you actually break in? So clearly anyone can break into social media. So that's why kids are seeing this. They're like, wait, why would I do all this extra effort in schooling when well, I can go right into it anytime, any place, anywhere? A question I have to ask you to maybe ponder about it throughout this video is, should high schools or colleges see it as a major? Should people be able to major in social media? Should people be able to major in content creation? There is art creation, right? There is different videography things that are always have always been majors. But what about specifically content creation? Who are the professors that I'd be content creator professors? Are you gonna be able to find them by, oh, they have a million followers on TikTok. So yeah, they could be your professor now. But how do you find this? How do you able to teach this? Do you just keep learning on YouTube and listen to YouTube gurus who tell you how to blow up on YouTube or become really successful on TikTok? So it becomes this, again, this interesting conversation to have. With the evolving job market, people are realizing that these jobs that were always a guarantee might not be a guarantee for the next, for example, a trucker. A job that was, is seen as the most popular job in 38 states across America could be seen to fall apart because of the fact that cars are gonna be able to drive themselves within the next five, 10 years. We see where automation is going. We see where technology is going. We're watching cars right now drive themselves from state to state to state without needing someone to touch the wheel. That's insane. Imagine telling someone that 20 years ago that that would be happening. They'd be like, oh my gosh, wow, that's insane. But then what happens to all those trucker jobs? What happens to all the motels and the pit stops that they stop at? What happens to all those businesses? What happens to all these different places and where it's not gonna be as needed? So again, the job market is changing and people are paying attention to this, especially the kids that have the time to look and see where the future is going. Remote work is something that started growing like crazy after the coronavirus pandemic and the gig economy. So again, the gig economy is things like Uber, you have Instacart, you have all these different apps that basically people come do your chores for you. So again, the gig economy is growing so fast, people are all working remotely, living all over the world, so again, live, work remotely. But because that competition is so high, the barrier of entry to be successful in it becomes even harder. So again, the future of jobs is changing, so this is why people wanna enter the creator economy, because then you're your own boss, you create your own hours. Entrepreneurship is on the rise. More and more people, more than ever, want to be entrepreneurs. But again, it's becoming harder and harder to become an entrepreneur. Obviously, there's also this beautification of becoming a content creator. Wow, they get to go on trips. They get to enjoy their life. They get to do whatever they want. They have money coming in. They're sponsored. They're this or that. It seems great and dandy, but again, it's another type of exploitation. Now more than ever, 
all of us are trying to do it. We all have phones, we all have social media, and most of us aren't getting paid for it. So in turn, it is the highest amount of time in where we're all doing some sort of labor for entertainment or society, but we're not getting paid for it. So theoretically speaking, in all of history, this is the most we've ever been exploited. So the perceived glamour versus the reality of it is a lot more dire than one might think. Obviously, social media is a huge aspect here and everyone wants to be an influencer and use social media to do it, right? It's the best place to have a message, to upload things on TikTok, YouTube. It's important. And hey, if you have a voice, you have a message, share it. It's important. Yes, do that. But again, why is it not being seen as a viable career option? Is it because the guarantee is a lot less? Because it requires more luck? But what if you create your own luck? So again, what's the rate of, of success now? What's the rate of success in someone becoming an influencer versus the rate of success of someone becoming a doctor? Can people even afford to become a doctor anymore? Can people even spend all this time to become this? And again, the society is starting to falter more and more and more where our scores are going down in all standardized testing across the board. So things are not looking up for our society. Kids aren't reading and writing like they used to. So again, we're gonna enter this creator gig economy more than ever. But how are we gonna be able to withstand it? How are we gonna be able to do it? I really wanna know what you guys think, because again, for me, I see the problems, we see the factors, but realistically speaking, what's really gonna happen in the next five, 10 years? Are we all just gonna end up having to be on the creator economy? Are real jobs gonna just falter away? What are you gonna need a salesman for when you can just sell it on TikTok? When you can use Amazon, we can use this. There's so many different businesses out there that are online. And this illusion of choice, illusion of creativity will affect us. Because again, with all these options, people are gonna have this feeling of, I, I don't know what to do anymore because there's so many options I could do that they end up doing nothing at all. What do you guys think? One of the things that I really wanna end on is something about the dependency on these platforms. So what happens if you get banned on your account that was making you money? Do then do you just lose all the money you made? What happens if the account goes, you forget the password, then what? And again, I was talking to a friend who again is an influencer was doing this type of thing and saying, what happens if my account just vanished tomorrow? Then do I get the brand deals? Do I have a say? Then does my values inherently go away 100%? Isn't that an interesting concept to think about that without this, say the internet turned off, no one has power, then what? Who's really engaging in your content? Then are you really making money? So this is something that I want to outsource to you guys in conversation and say, what do you guys think? Please feel free in the comments again, talk about this because again, I'm curious too because as someone who again is in the social media space, likes this and is obviously creating his own social media and doing it as well, but creating more of a chatting social media, then what happens then? Like it's all these different conversations that we have to have, but again, not a lot of answers. So what do you guys think? Be sure to again to like, subscribe, share, and send it to all your friends. I wanna hear what you guys think in the comments. It does help the algorithm, it helps increase it. And if you wanna be a content creator, you wanna go into that field of business, please do it. Like it's enjoyable if you like creating content, you like talking to people, you like sharing a message. But again, don't do it just to chase the glamour when you have to know the reality of what you're going after. Thank you guys again, I'll see you next week.